by the amount of people who have showed up to welcome the birth of this book, which I couldn't ever believe would have come out like this and have the appreciation of all my loved ones sitting here. I could not be ever more grateful. And to my parents, I owe everything to you. And uh, please forgive me. I I do believe I'm a better writer than a speaker. And if I tend to offend or create an assumption, I'm sorry. You can carry on. <laughs> Start off. Uh, very good evening to everyone present here. Uh, believe me, I'm very nervous. Uh, there's another book in the often It's called uh, 60 or 30. <laughs> I just turned 60 this year, and she had to write 30. So you can imagine my infinity complex uh, sitting with a woman. A woman. Uh, as a wonderful, as a human being too, as well as a poet. Uh, we have uh, a great many writers here today from very uh, one Oru Pratham, Nadanjia, Kula Saitya. Uh, many of the writers from the forum here, from the uh, Naughty Writers Forum. <coughs> Mitra Vedu gave an excellent speech. I think Mitra Vedu, after you said that, there's nothing more for me to uh, interact with uh, Alicia. But it behoves upon me as uh, the designated person today to uh, delve into some of her, what you would call the psychology of a uh, poet. Parent Saran sir is here. Sir, if you kindly bear with me, if there is any sort of, uh, uh, well, stuttering on my part, please do bear with me. Alicia, we will start off this way. We relax. This is no interview. Uh, just relax. I am feeling very, you know, in any period in front of you. Uh, everybody has been saying right from the beginning, and I had also had the good fortune when Chandra, who Alisa's father, I referred to him as Chandra, very a brother, more a brother than a colleague officer. About uh, six months back, uh, we met, and uh, he rang me up and said, Ruba, Alisa's got the muse all of a sudden. And she's got this collection of poems. And I said, Maya, Chandra, why don't we all meet and see what it's like? So this is the bundle I got six months back. There are 46 poems here. These all have been included in the 73 that are reflected in 30 or 30. Now, I ran him up the next day. Alicia, I'm interacting with dad and mom for a while. You allow me? OK, now. So I said, uh, Chandra, this lady is uh, she's very mature. Right? And coming from me, my wife keeps calling me a very immature man. So I had problems, you know, actually being very uh, assertive about this word for maturity man. So, Alicia, you are 30. You began this, your writing when you were 12. What is your take on the word maturity? I, I, I've just got a few jottings here. This is because, you know, to uh, me, I work as a teacher, as a headmaster. Prabha, you. Agree with me, we need all noting all the time. So, Alicia? Um, the idea of maturity, you see, we associate it with adults, people who have gone through experiences to actually call themselves mature. I, I feel as a 14 year old uh, that. I, I have not necessarily had those traumatic experiences or experiences which should make me mature, but from the experiences I've heard and seen, I do feel that being mature can be responsible. And I'd rather be a responsible 14 year old than an immature one. And believe me, Anisha, you are indeed very responsible because each of the poems I have had the good fortune, like Mitra Bajo here, and uh, your parents to have gone through each of the poems. And uh, with whatever little uh, credibility that I carry in me, I can say each of these poems carries a maturity that is not given to uh, children or women of your age. Now, uh, apart from that, I find 
then you know there's a word called surreal or I would say subtle. You have a good degree of subtle, you don't really make it very obvious as to what you intend, yet at the same time carrying a significance and assurance, I would say a singularity. You you are like, like the cigarette, demons, puddles. These are what uh, Mitra Bailo has called uh, they, they reflect a good degree of a certain metaphor that's surrounding you as a halo, H-A-L-O. Uh, this, this, this singularity, singularity that finally goes into a certain duality or let us say subtlety. I hope I'm not being too, you know, academic. Prabha? No, no. This is not a school room. So, you, what, what, uh, did you feel like that when you wrote that you'd end up or you'd, you'd be going into this sort of a subtlety? Since you mentioned the word surreal, my parents used to think I was mad, really. Honestly, they, I used to wake up at 3 a.m. and I used to be like, I'm getting something, I want to write. I, there's something, this poetry coming, this poetry coming, there's some sort of poetic emergency right now. And they called me Nimisha Kavi, which means in our language, surreal. So, a surrealist poet. And uh, they used to call up my sister on the phone and they said that this girl is going crazy. She's, she's just writing. And um, I do agree that there is a singularity, but all of my poems end with a duality. Because, you see, um, I love to put life into inanimate objects. I love to see how they would be if they were alive. Creatures with people and people with creatures. Uh, it is Alisha, I'll just interrupt there. What do you mean by inanimate objects? I mean, creatures are not uh, inanimate. Not just creatures. I mean, uh, let's just say a cigarette, okay. um, coffee, or a mirror. So that way. And creatures. That's... Uh, I'll just interrupt here again. I went over to Maya's place, Chandra, because they called my wife and I me over for dinner. Oh, sorry, it was the reverse. We called Chandra and Maya over for dinner to go through the manuscript. And uh, don't take it otherwise, my our house is not all that bad, really, but there was a rat <laughs> in the drawing room. <laughs> okay, fine. But the, you know, rats mean that there's something dirty. It's a beautiful there. rat. It's beautiful rat. It's beautiful. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, she wrote a poem there. The rat. It's here in the collection, and it's one of the finer poems in the entire collection. So please continue, Alicia. As you see, the world is full of contradictions, but we fail to recognize or acknowledge them because we don't want problems in our life, and. Attributing contradictions to people, to creatures, we see a whole new perspective to what the thing could have been. And I love to put them together and I guess that is why every single poem ends with a duality. Are you sure it's every single poem? What about daffodils? Daffodils? Not my poem. The flower. The sun the sun the sun I was flying back to my school days. The sunflower. Uh, the sunflower. I do refer to another person. I do. Uh, Alicia, your, I have known your parents for a pretty long time, especially your, uh, your father because we are colleagues. And uh, he is a sort of a literary friend uh, whom I cherish. He is an author in Urdu. A fan of the great Dostoevsky. We are both great fans of Russian literature, and he swears by uh, the brothers Karamazov. I swear by crime and punishment. Why I'm saying is this how much has he or both Maya and Chandra influenced you in your literary creativity? The fact that I'm sitting here is because of them. So. <laughs> and um, this entire poetic adventure, me writing on notepads, pamphlets, everywhere, and my mother collecting them and storing them, and my father criticizing everyone, and it was just, uh, with me ending, 
uh, after finishing one poem, I'd always go up to him and I'd say, uh, "Ye dekho, maine naya banaya." And he would say, he would like, he would go through it, and then he would say, "It's okay, it's okay." And um, I would say, "You never say anything good about me." And he says, "You need to be, you need to understand that there's a lot more to achieve and there's a lot more to learn." And uh, I couldn't have had a better inspiration. And uh, my father and my mother, my mother loves to paint. And she's an artist in her own right. And when I write poetry, I love to think of the way my mother paints and the way my dad speaks and the way my dad sings. And in all my poems, considering the fact that every poem is a shard of the same mirror, they are two a part of every single one of them. Okay. That's a lovely way of uh, acknowledging love and uh, creativity that attends such love. Uh, Alicia, what books? This is the stock question. Any, I mean, any, any interaction and dates. So, what books have influenced you? Poems, books, authors, writers, whatever. To be honest, I have I hadn't really read any poetry before coming down to writing poetry. I just felt uh, these words and I just connected them and they formed poetry. Um, I read some poetry a little later after my dad influenced me to start reading Ghalib, Saeed El Tabrizi, Rumi, and Pabda Naruda, of course. And of uh, I've been more of a prose reader than poetry, and the my favorite authors uh, are Jhumpa Lahiri, Khalid Husseini, and uh, J.K. Rowling. Since the age of eight, when I finished the entire series, so, um, I books have always I've always held them dear to be, and and uh, writing one day and being part of this word called an author or a writer is surreal to me. Wonderful. Uh, Alicia, I'm, you are known as a singer and also as a debater. I can make out you're a good debater because you're speaking so very well now. Uh, how, how has or has your singing uh, or your penchant for uh, singing influenced your uh, poetry or your poems? I mean, what's your take on that? Music has. In what way? Music In what has. Way? Um, music is a beautiful way of communi communicating through sounds. And in poetry, we attempt to make the reader aware of all senses smell, sound, touch. And when you think of music, it helps you to understand the nuances of sound. And when you go through the lyrics of, say, a song, they help you connect better. And music has helped me. What kind of music do you prefer? Uh, music uh, of all kinds, whatever, soulful. Or, um, I do listen to a lot of uh, acoustic music, R&B, all of that. Uh, Alicia, we, are, we have been given 15 minutes uh, for this. I think we can take another 5 minutes or so. Uh, Mitra Baido, in her uh, excellent speech, had referred to the word metaphor a number of times. In fact, it's something that is very dear to me, similes and metaphors. And uh, if you go, if I mean, you have, that, these are your poems, 90% of your poems deal with metaphor. Did they come consciously? I mean, well, this is a straight question in a way because poetry comes unbidden, like they say. It's got so many definitions, but the purest form is when it comes unbidden. But this metaphor angle, was it a conscious uh, metaphor? Let us say, how many times did you revise your uh, poem? Was it a first attempt? Uh, or did you go in for the several re revisions? This would be. My mother tells me that I write uh, all of a sudden and it just ends. And if someone wants to put uh, 
some sort of correction there. I don't like it because it happens all of a sudden. I have an idea in my head and as I write, it forms as long as I think, uh, just as I'm thinking. And um, uh, as you said, that have I, do I think of it? Do I revise it? No. Okay. It's a, a one-time effort. Okay? It's a one-time. Okay, that's very fine. In fact, uh, I had introduced, in fact, uh, for the audience when I got the uh, the first manuscript from uh, Maya and Chandra, and I'm I'm not really a poet. We all have our own secret poetry society with ourselves. I think all of us have written poems. Uh, so, not being a published poet. I sent it to a very famous poet in the North, he's called uh, Robin Nangong. He's in uh, Shillong, a member of a forum, very vibrant poet. His book, books are uh, taught abroad in Wales, in Switzerland, etc. I mailed him the poems and I said, Robin, please give me your views. And he said that this girl has such a lot of spontaneity, Roba, it's very surprising. I told him she's 13 years old. I want uh, them, uh, most people out here to know that it's not just I who is a fiction writer basically, but poet, a poet of major repute uh, in the North East, in India or internationally, who thinks well of Alicia's poems. Now, Alicia, I'll go to a slightly, uh, slightly you know, nuanced question. Yeah. Are you writing as a girl or are you writing as a woman? question I can't answer myself but um, as a girl I write of feelings of thoughts of memories but as a woman I write of things what I wish I were and what I believe in oh, that's beautiful that's beautiful I think the class for that dear and dear woman what she believes in and that's a beautiful thing to say uh, Your, your book has been divided into three sections, you think, correct? One is perception, one is intuition, and the third one is reflections, right? Now, uh, intuition, perception, and reflection. Uh, what made you streamline it into three? Because just between you and me and the gathering here, I found very little difference in the poems, in the, in the contents, in each poem that would allow such a demarcation. This is my personal opinion. Alicia, could you just elaborate on that? Um, as you see, I mentioned uh, in my author's note that these poems are of consisting of charts, yes, and uh, what I wish I were, what, and some of them are thoughts, and some what I wish I were. Uh, I mean, some are memories that way. And, I gave them as reflection because those are my thoughts. Those poems are, I, uh, those are what I feel and those are what I've undergone. And when I think of intuition, those are poems I write about what I'm passionate. You know, like as Mitra Andi has said, feminism and uh, a lot of other things which really do uh, make me feel uh, like I should write about them. And so they all fall under the category of intuition. It's uh, th These poems, I had to give them some thought while I wrote them. Reflection just came to me. And when we think of perception, these are what I wish I was. Okay, now probably the last question. Uh, Alicia, if you stick to feminism, what about your uh, hold on non-feminist issues? I'm saying this uh, because there is this, uh, this which talk. Men writers, they have a, they write about masculine issues, for example, Hemingway, Raymond Carver, and then you have Sylvia Plath, you have uh, Kamala Das, they write about only women. But what about what we spoke the other day about humankind, which includes both feminism and 
masculinity, if that is the word at all. I used to try the tough question, basically academic. I would be deliberately eaten it that way so that we can finish our way that round. It's a common misconception that feminism is all things feminine and whatever could be associated with women and whatever they like. But for me, and for every other woman who considers herself a feminist, feminism is equality. Feminism is just writing down and telling the other person that I have the right to say these oh, things. I think she deserves a clap for that. Sandra, you have a remarkable daughter. I think you deserve a clap for that. Uh, Arisha, you want to continue? And um, I, I felt, my, I, I have mentioned that my sister is a great inspiration for me. Because at the age of 10, she sat me down and she explained that, do you know what you really are? Have you thought about it? Why must you wear pink? And why must others wear blue? And why must they speak in a masculine way? And why must you speak in a feminine way? And who has taught us that? And who has the right to teach us that? And who are we not to teach ourselves? what we must do and feminism is not just encourage, the encouraging women into jobs or say literary fields or whatever like sports. Feminism is accepting the fact that women have the right to be there along with men and men to have the right to be along with women and they have every single person, every single individual has a right to be whoever they wish to be and we don't have the ideas of gender to hold us back. Very well spoken. Alicia? Alicia, that, uh, I, although I kept saying in the last question that you know, I, I, I keep prompting myself for some more because it's nice talking to you. You know, there's always this amazing fight between the uh, between how powerful a person be a poet can be and the poems themselves. So, uh, the way I see it, that your personality is very strong. You are in search of yourself, you are assertive, you are not a hypocrite. In fact, I was coming to that, your poems uh, indicate a lack of hypocrisy, amazing lack of hypocrisy. Now, this, this fight between the excellence in your poetry and the fact that you are a very strong personality, do you think these two characters will fight themselves one day? Your poetry on the one hand, and you being a strong personality. Uh, my divided existence. Perhaps. As I mentioned, there is one part of me which will always fight, and there is one part of me which will always write what I cannot speak or what I cannot show. As you've said, that I, you, everyone assumes me to be a strong personality, but when I think of poetry. It's my catharsis. It helps me let out my emotions. And poetry, if I'm not wrong, is not my weak side, which helps me, gives me shelter. And if you may call it my weakness, but I see it as a growth. It's not your weakness at all, Arisha. In fact, it's given a lot of strength. Your personality has given a lot of strength to the poems, to your poetry. But then I'll go back to what you began with by saying that you are a woman without or a girl without much of experience. Yet this conflict, and you'll agree that for good poetry, good fiction, good short stories, good literature, you need conflict in life or in your thoughts or in your feelings. So we'll end up with one question. That's all, ladies and gentlemen. Do you have a lot of conflict in you which can be construed to be experience? Stop, period, for me. I, I have a lot of friends uh, dealing with this problem called self-hate. We all have reached a certain point in our lives where we hate the person we are. We don't like the person we are, the person we reside in. And for some period of my life, I did not like the person I was. I, I just loathed myself. And I met so many people so many of my friends still today are dealing with this problem where they ca cannot accept the person they are. And when you think of how important self-love is, 
loving the person you are and just accepting the fact that you are this person and you are proud to, proud to be who you are. Uh, poetry helped me. Ladies and gentlemen, how can I mean, uh, uh, had I been in Alicia's shoes, I probably wouldn't have been able to reply to the questions I would have probably put to myself. But the way she has handled it is a reflection of the kind of maturity she carries in her poems. I refer to conflict because our very own Director General Police is here. And conflict in the external life, law and order, duties, etc. is a very kind of vehemence that allows you stories. But a woman as tender in age as her, having a fertile mind with a matured imagination, I mean, a, a matured attitude towards life, she's got tremendous conflict in her, which she has made it into a singularity. And that singularity is found in the effusions that are contained in this remarkable poem. There has been a lot of accolades. A lot of, uh, each of us has been from Jaidim, Mitra Bajo, I, Lina, where is Lina? We have all spoken very highly of our poems. It's an individual uh, assessment. Because as uh, many years back, I think it was Arup Dhafta, uh, our president of the forum, Nordic Writers Forum, who said that literature is a very funny business. Because what is food for someone is poison for the other. But then when it's food for all, which is what this book is, has shown to us, Alice. Alicia, I think you have got it made. And in the years to come, I was telling Chandra and Maya, provided you within your humility, because it's very difficult for a young woman to carry her laurels with humility. Because once you lose humility somewhere along the line, arrogance comes and plays its own devil. With that, I will just read out one poem, because it's my favorite poem here, and just bear with me for four or five minutes then we can probably walk out. It's called The Unfathomable Truth of Strangers. I'll repeat, it's in page 65, The Unfathomable Truth of Strangers. It's my favorite here. Moments of utter abandon, decorated with hymns of contentment. You are etched in the memory of the black, black pen with which I write. Displayed as the muse of my solitude, the silent jabbering and merciless stares. The pen shall remember. In the hopes of what have arisen, the thoughts will remember. And I shall remember the tales which we believed were said between two people who didn't know each other. Thank you very much, Alicia. Congratulations.